Welcome back. With new districts to run and new rules on how to win primaries, the rules of the game are changing for legislators who are thinking about running for re-election or for another office. How do they feel about the changes? We have two of them here to tell us. Um, State Assemblymember Henry Perea, Democrat from Fresno, and Bill Berryhill, uh, Republican from Ceres. Uh, welcome to you both. Uh, so, theoretically, these changes are supposed to increase compromise, reduce gridlock, and improve civility. Do you think they will? I hope they will. Uh, I think that um, redistricting the open primary is going to have a bigger impact uh, in the large urban areas where seats are often safe. In the Valley, I think you find a lot of Democrats and Republicans that tend to be more moderate. Uh, so we're used to campaigning, um, you know, in a way that redistricting and open primaries will force, I think, the rest of the state to. So I'm very hopeful and very supportive of both changes. You know, it's interesting you say that because a lot of times people don't call the legislators from our area Republicans or Democrats. They're often referred to as Valleycrats. Right. And so I think that kind of follows up on what you're saying. Uh, well, what do you think, uh, Assemblymember uh, Barry Hill? Uh, do you think it's going to have an effect? Yeah, I, I would agree with what Henry said. Uh, the valley seats, the valley's the valley, and it, it tends to be just a little either to the left or a little to the right of the line. But when you get into some of the, the mountain seats that are very conservative and the, and the urban seats are, are oftentimes very liberal, those, those seats it's going to be a game changer for. And so, uh, yeah, it should make more competitive seats, and I think that's better for the process. Uh, that was the idea, originally, yep. theoretically. Now let's Absolutely. talk practically. I hate to do this, talk about numbers, but okay. the political landscape in Sacramento, which party stands to gain from redistricting and open primaries, in your opinion? You know, in my opinion, at the end of the day, it still comes down to voter registration. And so Democrats statewide still have a um, pretty large uh, lead over Republicans in terms of actual voter, registered voters. So I think that ultimately, uh, I don't know that things change that much. I think what you find is that you get candidates that are just more moderate. So I don't know that the numbers change, but instead of having liberal Democrats, hopefully you'll have moderate. Instead of having two you know, right-wing Republicans, you'll have more moderate Republicans. That's where, that's where I hope the change will come in. Yeah, and I would agree with that. And I think uh, at the end of the day, uh, you still have to have candidates that fit those districts, wh whatever that district looks like. And whether it's if, if the Republicans pick the right candidate for that district, they'll run strong. If the Democrats, they'll run strong. So yeah, you still got to get the right candidates. It's moved inland a little bit. We should be picking up a what a seat? I, I think a seat or two, right. and on the in the in the uh, valley. There's and strong population growth in the valley. Right, and so that would tend, I would think, to favor Republicans a little bit because there's a more conservative valley. But but, but a the lot registration of, is against us, so you know. But the population growth in the valley is primarily Hispanic. Sure, right. So, so you know. So I guess we better get our act together. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me talk about the open primary law. <laughs> I've been telling you that for months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the open primary law for a second. Um, what impact do you think it's going to have on political parties in California? Is it going to make it stronger, make them stronger or weaker? You, you know, I, I think political parties will still have relevance w within, within uh, even within open primaries. I think the real question has become, uh, will be whether or not open primaries uh, increase the cost of campaigns. Because now you have, now essentially you, you are running two general elections which means you have to reach out to more people, uh, a broader base, uh, a lot sooner than you would have normally. So I think ultimately campaigns do get more expensive because of open primaries. More expensive than they are now? I, I believe so because right now in a partisan primary, um, I'm only talking to Democrats. And then when I get to the general, I'm talking to Democrats and Republicans. Now I'll be doing, you know, I'll be essentially running two general uh, election campaigns. That's kind of the unintended consequences sometimes of this uh, of these kinds of initiatives. You know, let me ask you, some member Barry Hill, about the money in politics with that. Some member uh, Perea just mentioned. It, it, as he said, a lot of people think that it's going to increase the flow of money into politics. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You know, it, oftentimes uh, I think over the years a lot of the political reforms that were were meant to throttle down the amount of money that goes into politics, I really haven't made it any better. So I'm not sure it really hurts that there's more money. It hurts the candidates because we got to go out there asking for more <laughs> money. Darling for dollars. You know, I mean, but yeah, yeah it's, it, it takes more of your time. Instead of being out meeting with people, you're, you're spending more time raising money. And, and so that's, in my book, that's not productive politically, but it's part of the necessity of, of, the, of the, uh, the way campaigns are run. Uh, what's going to be interesting, I think, is going to be the amount of money coming from unions into uh, where they would normally, SEIU just did a, a deal on the flash report, where they would normally not engage, they're well, going so to be for engaging. Our, for, our, for our viewers who don't know about the flash report, could you explain well, what that, that audience is? That, that is a very, pretty much a conservative Republican uh, blog, 
and has a lot of good articles that all of us look at. But uh, at the that end, it seems like an anomaly. The SEIU yeah. on a conservative blog. <laughs> it is, but that's the the game changing. And you're going to see, you will see business groups working to try to get moderates and, and uh, Democrats elected. So you're going to see you're going to see a lot of cross money coming in that hasn't before. So that'll be interesting. You know, we've only got about 30 seconds left, but quickly, um, do you think that just because it's out there, redistricting and open primaries, does that change the tone in terms of civility in Sacramento? I think it will in the next couple of months as, as the commission comes out with their new maps in the next 30 days. I think that will change the tone quite a bit. Yeah, yeah and I, I think it's kept some people that might normally be a bit more pragmatic that think they may be running in either a more conservative or a more liberal district. It, 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 it hampers their ability to get engaged as much as you'd like to see them in the whole budget process. So yeah, it's, it's, it's made a little impact now, more later. Well, thank you very much for being with us. When we come back, we'll get the take from two veteran Sacramento reporters, John Myers and Dan Walters. That conversation in a moment. This is the Maddie Report. If you'd like to share your thoughts about the points and opinions expressed in the Maddie Report, visit our website at valleypbs.org slash Maddie. 